Hey everybody, I had to give him time to lower this thing. Uh, I don't have any uh, anything to open with, so Matt, do you have anything more? Uh, I don't have anything on Syria, so if there's anyone left who wants to ask about Syria, go ahead. I'm shocked that you want to ask about Syria. Go, uh, why don't we go to you and then you? Go ahead. Okay, Russia, I have two questions on Syria. Russia has said that this ceasefire, which the Secretary just discussed, or cessation of hostilities also applies to um, the, uh, the YPG and the Free Syrian Army. Is, is that correct? Or would it also involve stopping the fighting between the, essentially the Turks and the Kurds in Syria? No, well, again, remember what this is. It's, it's not changed in character. The cessation of hostilities, which was put in place in February, applied uh, or supposed to apply uh, to everybody, but those groups designated by the UN as terrorists inside Syria, and and there are two. There's Daesh and there's Al Nusra, which the secretary made very clear is, uh, is Al Qaeda. It's Al Qaeda in Syria, um, and so we, if the cessation of hostilities is implemented, if it's observed, then the only two groups um, that uh, may continue to be targeted by anybody are those two. Hostilities would include Turkish-Kurdish confrontation. Well, we've that we have long said that we don't want to see, uh, and I said this a couple weeks ago that we don't want to see violence or clashes between Turkish forces and, and Kurdish forces. What we've said, and I'll say it again today, is that we want them, as members of the counter Daesh coalition, to fight Daesh. That that's where their we want their energies uh, to be to be applied. And, and my. Thank you. And my second Syri Syria question is that the Kurdish National Council of, of Syria, as well as the Assyrians, have protested a document this, that was issued by the uh, put out by the Saudi-backed opposition, the HNC, and that's their framework for a transitional period in Syria. And the complaint is that it's Arabist-based and Islamist-based and doesn't take account of the interests of minorities in Syria. Yeah. Do you have a comment on that? And are you concerned that leaving so much to countries like Saudi Arabia were reproducing the problem that we had in Afghanistan after the 1980s, the war with the Soviets, and Pakistan was in charge, and the result was not something very pretty? I'm not quite sure what you mean by the last part of your question, but I will say we continue to be grateful for Saudi Arabia's leadership here in working with uh, the HNC and the, and the moderate opposition to, to help them coalesce around uh, guiding principles. Now, look, I, I haven't seen um, the protest specifically. I'm aware of it. I'm aware of the the, uh, the the basic gist of it. I haven't seen it, and it wouldn't be right for me to go through it line by line. Um, what I would tell you is this: that nothing's changed about our view here in the United States, and I, and I think I can say the same for members of the ISSG that what we want to see in in Syria is. Uh, a country that's unified, that's whole, that's pluralistic, that includes and is representative of all Syrians, no matter what their walk of life, no matter what religion they practice or what ethnicity they represent. Uh, that's what we said from the outset. Um, and that is the goal that the United States and the international community is going to continue to pursue. I guess my, my question that wasn't clear, and I apologize, after the Soviet war against the Soviets ended in Afghanistan in 89, the United States left it to Pakistan to kind of craft the government for Afghanistan, and we have what we're all familiar with. And essentially what Pakistan was doing was exporting its own problematic ruling principles to Afghanistan. Yeah. And if you let the Saudis do the same thing, you could end up with the same result. And my question is, shouldn't the United States perhaps be more involved and less left to the countries like Saudi Arabia? I think the United States is very involved here in uh, what we want to see uh, for the future of Syria. We are uh, co-founders of the International Syria Support Group. And the Secretary, you just heard him talk about um, how uh, deeply engaged we're going to continue in this process going forward and about having about trying to reach a political solution here. Um, so, uh, so first of all, no, nobody's talking about ceding American leadership here. Number two, I would say that uh, nobody's talking about having 
Saudi Arabia as, uh, as sort of a, uh, a lone single uh, custodian uh, of the future of Syria. We want the future of Syria to be determined by Syrians. That's why we're working so hard to find a political solution to this civil war, so, so that the Syrian people can determine uh, what their government looks like uh, at the end of this transitional process. And an important point that the Secretary made earlier is that the whole reason we're working through these kinds of arrangements now with the Russians uh, isn't just to get a ceasefire for a ceasefire's sake. It is to create the kind of space and the conditions that will allow Stefan de Mistura to bring the sides back to the negotiating table in Geneva uh, and try to get the political process started. We, we all, nobody wants to see what we've seen in the last three iterations where, uh, where nothing got resolved. And why did nothing get resolved? Because there was still violence and innocent people were still being killed. So this isn't about ceding the leadership or the direction of Syria to any one country except for Syria itself and the Syrian people. Yeah. Just a few on Syria and also on uh, on the Philippines. How many? I can ask, few? ask later. Uh, two, two on two, Syria. Right, two right. that I com came okay. up with uh, listening to Secretary Kerry, uh, and later on the Philippines. Will, will you take my Philippines questions as well? I just want to make sure. Far Thank away. you. Thank you very much. So on Syria, how many groups, to your knowledge, have refused to abide by the ceasefire? I'm not aware uh, at this point. We're not aware of uh, of any uh, groups that have outright refused. I saw reports that Akhar al Sham refused to abide by the ceasefire. Does the U.S. have influence with that group? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen those reports uh, as well. But again, I'd, I'd go back to what I said before. Uh, we're in two, two points. We're, as you might expect, in constant contact with the moderate opposition and have been throughout this process up to the meeting in Geneva and then certainly in the, the hours and days since then. Um, and again, we're not aware of any single group that has uh, come out um, rejecting it or, or an opposition. Now, that said, and the Secretary talked about this as well, we understand that, um, that certain of them have doubts, have concerns. Um, we recognize that. That's why we're in constant contact with them. We also uh, are taking a, a pretty clear-eyed approach here. I mean, nobody is saying for a moment that this isn't going to be difficult. In contact with moderate uh, opposition, uh, is this specific group considered to be moderate opposition? The, the, uh, again, I, I don't have the list of every group here, uh, but uh, Har al-Sham is not designated as a, a terrorist organization inside Syria, and so therefore it is a group that, uh, uh, that we have maintained a level of contact with in terms of discussing uh, what this arrangement means uh, going forward. Okay? one on Syria. Sorry. Uh, based on what the Secretary just said now, is it, uh, he seemed to say, well, he didn't seem to say, he did say, that if and when you get this week-long reduction in violence and the JIC takes effect, that the United States and Russia could agree on places where the Assad, where Assad's Air Force could bomb or uh, go after Nusra. That's what he said. He said he is allowed and will be able outside of that area if the JIC gets set up to target Nusra. But that will be on strikes that are agreed upon with Russia and the United States in order to go after them. Yes. Is that, uh, are you comfortable with that? I thought the whole idea was to ground the Air Force completely. No, Matt. The, the idea was not to... And, and that, that the only people who would be flying combat operations after the JIC got set up would be the U.S. and Russia, except for in the areas where ISIS is? Uh, no. Actually, that was not the understanding and, and was not part of the discussions uh, uh, throughout the process. The, the idea was not to, uh, quote, unquote, ground uh, Assad's Air Force everywhere all the time. The objective, right. was to, the objective was to limit their combat operations in such a way that they could not hit opposition targets or civilian targets, but that if they were, if they were able, willing, intending to target Nusra, which is outside the cessation of hostilities, that would still be permissible. But the whole purpose for the JIC is to allow um, uh, for a measure of compliance and monitoring um, uh, and uh, pre-coordination of strikes that they would do against Nusra, so that it's not, it's not done without visibility of both 
Russian and, and U.S. planners. Yeah, but two and a half weeks ago in Geneva, before the meetings in China, the idea, at least I thought it was the idea, and maybe I got this wrong, but I, it, was, it was that with the exception of ISIS, Assad's forces wouldn't be allowed to go after anybody, and that the only people who would go after Nusra in the, air, in the safe zone, <clears throat> for lack of a better word, would be the U.S. and Russia. That's clearly wrong, right? I, I think you were incorrect in, surmi in surmising that. I, th I think or someone was incorrect in telling us, not just me, that, right? <laughs> or I, it I, changed. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, no, maybe, I don't, maybe something I don't believe, changed between I, the – I don't believe there's been any change to that. I mean, the, the understanding well, – as we work through this now for many weeks, the understanding was that – that's why we wanted maps of designated areas, areas where we knew Nusra was predominant, areas where we know the opposition is predominant, and areas where they're marbled and mixed. And inside those three types of areas, uh, Assad would not uh, – he, he, that, that yeah, he, 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 he wouldn't go after opposition, or he wouldn't go after uh, areas where it's mixed where, because, because he's not capable of discrete, discriminant targeting. Uh, but as the Secretary said, in accordance with the JIC and, and the work of, uh, of U.S. Uh, and, and Russian planners, uh, it, it, we're not ruling out that Assad would be able to strike at Nusra. Uh, again, Nusra is a, a, a UN-designated foreign terrorist organization. They are not party to the cessation, um, and uh, so there would there's really no grounds, and, and frankly, little purpose in trying to completely uh, limit and restrict the Assad regime from hitting Nusra. The idea, though, is that that if and when they did, there would be visibility, there would be transparency over that inside the, the yeah, joint you implementation. You already stuff. say that he's not actually targeting them. Well, Nusra. exactly. I mean, well, what happens if the Russians come to you and say, okay, here's a target that we want to hit, and, you, and, and, and the Syrians want to hit it, and you guys say, well, no, it's mixed. Is it a two to one vote? And, or you, you guys have, well, that's, you can say that no. Was the, but that was the purpose for pouring over the maps so and the it? technicalities of those areas, absolutely. Okay, how exactly do Well, you do look, that? I don't, I, I'm not going to go through chapter and verse of the way the JIC is going to operate. For one thing, because the teams are discussing, as the Secretary said right now in Geneva, to set up yeah, the kinds of processes and procedures that the JIC no, would use. You have, you have no, no recourse, though. If they they, they, they they could bomb an area that they say is Nusra, and you guys say is marbleized, and there's zero, but, and there's zero consequence. No, no, I didn't say that at all. Not, no, I know you didn't say that, but that's what the effect is. No, no, it's not. It's not. Look, I, again, I don't want to get too much in the details here of procedure because, again, those procedures are being worked out. But the whole idea of having designated areas and sharing information, targeting information in those areas, areas where yeah. there's marbleized and areas where there's opposition, is is to do exactly that: to limit, to restrict, to stop. Uh, Assad from being able uh, to go after opposition groups where they are. Yeah, but the whole my, and my understanding of the entire thing was that you were going to ground Assad's air force in areas that in these so-called permissive safe no-fly zones, and that's clearly not what's happening here, because they are still going to be allowed to attack in areas that are uh, that may be opposition held but with marbleized components. N no. No, it, it, they won't. It, it, it's not. It's not quite that simple. They will be permitted, if again, if there is a consensus here inside the JIC uh, that to to hit a a designated, a known um, Nusra target. Um, there's no prohibition under this arrangement for them to do that, but it will be with the visibility of both the United States and Russia. Uh, b beforehand, yeah, but, um, but on mar under? but but wait a minute now. But on areas where they're mixed and marbleized, where we know there is, uh, we know there is opposition nearby or intermingled with, um, they won't be allowed to do that. That's the whole reason why we've got these designated areas where we know Nusra is dominant, where we know the opposition is dominant, and where it's mixed. The whole idea for having a discussion with the Russians about this, such as we have to this point, and will continue to have if the JIT gets s s set up. Uh, is to provide a level of, of certainty uh, and visibility on where Assad would be able to fly. But there was, n there was never a, 
a point at which uh, we said, at least I can't remember a time where we said, that they were going to be grounded permanently forever and not allowed to fly. It's, it's about flying combat missions against opposition and civilians that we want to restrict. Uh, it was never that they were going to be entirely grounded. It was, though, right. after the Geneva meeting three weeks ago, unless I was m misinformed, and that's p possible, that they would not, they would only be allowed to fly combat missions against ISIS. And that areas where, uh, and, and areas that are outside, and against Nusra yeah. at, and ISIS outside of these safe zones. But inside the safe zone, the understanding was that they wouldn't be able to fly at all, that the only people who would be able to strike at Nusra targets in the safe zone would be the U.S. and Russia. You keep talking about safe zones, and maybe that's where we're getting hung up. I, I don't know what you mean by safe zone. The area where they're held by the opposition, which or you say marble, includes marble. Which on. would, right. yes, they would not, that's right. That is correct. They would not be able to strike in areas where we know the opposition is dominant, or opposition control, or where there is the uh, marbling, the intermingling, the mixing, because they're not capable of being discreet and discriminant uh, well, about that. That's different than what, than, than, what, than what you said before, because what the Secretary seemed to say was that in, inside the safe zone, uh, are we, is that the right yeah, term? No, what, it's what, not. The, okay, what's the right term? Uh, there's your pre-designated areas. The pre-designated areas, okay. Inside the pre-designated areas, is the Syrian Air Force allowed to target what uh, Nusra. In those areas that we know are Nusra dominant and where there's no opposition present, uh, uh, then yes. Well, but then it will be, but it will be on a case by case basis. But then they're not in the pre designated area. That th those people are not. Then that the, the, there are three types of pre designated areas. Yeah. The whole reason that we've had opposition, this Opposition, marbleized, and, and Nusra. Nusra. In the areas where we know Nusra is dominant, since Nusra is a foreign terrorist organization, since yeah. they're not party to the cessation of hostilities, I, yeah, yeah. okay, I, they'll be able to they'll be able to target Nusra, but it won't be without I, it won't be it it won't be unilaterally without the uh, without the uh, visibility uh, of the joint implementation. So, but you you have visibility now, or at least you say you do, because you because you claim that they're not that that, that they're hitting the opposition the, mod, the moderate opposition when they claim they're hitting. Nusra. Exactly. That visibility we, 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 exists now. I just don't understand. I'm not sure that I understand what the point of this whole thing is. No, if they can't, because, because if they can no, still fly it's exactly, and attack areas where that, that are in dispute. But the reason, and there's but, without, but the, without any punishment. But, the, but right now, Matt, they're doing it. They're, they're claiming they're going after Nusra, and they're really not. Okay? The, yeah. the, by and large, and you know this, the bulk of their military activity, whether it's on the ground or in the air, has been against opposition and it's been against civilians. And uh, on the rare occasion when they have hit a Nusra target, because they have been coming under attack by Nusra, so I'm not saying they're not doing, they're not hitting them at all. But on, the, on the occasions when they have, they've been doing it unilaterally, uh, or with the uh, uh, sometimes the support of the Russian military, and um, and there's been no, certainly no visibility on our side in terms of how they're doing it, when they're doing it, or how accurately they're doing it. So what the JIC will allow us to do, again, if it gets set up, and I'm not saying it will. We'll, we'll, there's two. There's two purposes here, and I think the one is uh, the coordination uh, and sharing of information. Uh, but the second thing is compliance and enforcement of the cessation of hostilities. So once, if we get a jick, it will give us, certainly the United States, much more visibility than we have right now uh, into where those neutral targets are and what Assad uh, is going to be allowed to. To do to, to, to How target. How does it give you guys more visibility into? Because what the we'll be because the are. because the Russians have influence over the regime, and the Russians will be able to share information with us inside but, the JIC. But you know where they are already, don't you? Or at least you say you do. Which is why we had which is why we had a All discussion right. well, about if designated areas. if and when we get areas. to next Monday and the JIC gets set up, I guess we can revisit this when, when because I, 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 I now I'm completely confused. I have no idea actually. Well, just, but anyway. Just to clarify, sorry. Go ahead. Visibility? Do you mean that you are going to know in advance where the Syrian government is going the to? Idea make? Is, the idea is the idea is to coordinate information, U.S. and the Russians, coordinate information um, on targeting uh, in advance of operations. And while we don't have obviously any communication directly with Assad's military, nor do we intend to, we know that the Russians have influence over what they uh, what they uh, what they do. Um, considerable influence, 
And I would point you back to what the secretary said, that the, that, um, that the Russians have assured us that Assad will abide by this arrangement. So and we'll see. So my last one then. Until, until next Monday, the regime, the, the, the Assad's Air Force, can continue to do what it's been doing, right? No. No, not at all. Well, so, the penalty is only that the JIC doesn't get set up if they, if they don't, right? If we don't see uh, a mutually satisfactory level of reduced violence, and there's some discretion in there, as the Secretary said, then the, the joint implementation shell doesn't get stood up and the arrangement doesn't, it doesn't and, and get completed. A, and that is a consequence for the regime? How? Well, because the civil they war. They want to continue. To, uh, the civil after war what will they continue. And as the Secretary said, it's hard to see that that's right. in anybody's interest. Okay. Thank you. Can we change the subject? I'm sorry? Can we change the subject? No. We still? Oh, no. I, okay. I've got right. a question about this issue of the Assad regimes and Air Force, uh, air, air strikes. And, you know, if, first of all, what are the consequences if, um, if he does hit some of these marbleized areas and says that he's going after Nusra? I mean, what's What's well, the, the idea the idea of having the Joint Implementation Center is no, so that that can't that happen. Is to prevent that from happening. But what if it does? Well, then, as we said, the, it, and it's written right in the arrangement, that at, at any time, either side here uh, can uh, render the uh, arrangement null and void, and it will be over. And if, and if uh, I don't want to get into hypotheticals here. I, I appreciate the, the desire to run through all the hypothetical situations. I don't think it's wise here at this very early stage I to mean, engage in that. Hang on a second. Would the planes be shot but down or, or prevent? I'm, I'm not going to engage in military. I'm not going to engage in military hypotheticals. What I can tell you is that there is a provision here where where either side, the U.S. or Russia, uh, can can uh, pull out of this arrangement if we're not seeing it genuinely complied with uh, by. Uh, the other side and by the parties that each side in influences. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals about <laughs> what if or what if that. I mean, uh, the joint implementation cell has something for both. The Russians, uh, it would, if implemented, give them a measure of coordination with, uh, w with the U.S. military that they don't have right now uh, and that they've expressed an interest in. For us, it gives us a real shot. Um, at uh, keeping Assad from barrel bombing and gassing his own people, as well as the opposition, and more critically, if a cessation of hostilities can be maintained and reduced violence can be established and sustained, uh, and humanitarian access, get the opposition back to the table with the regime in Geneva under the UN, uh, under UN auspices, and get a political process started. That's the real goal here. Okay, so I also have a question about this issue of the opposition separating from Al Nusra, um, because now now you're saying that these these marbleized areas, I, I guess that they can remain marbleized because they don't have to physically separate. But on Friday, Secretary Kerry said that if groups within the legitimate opposition want to retain their legitimacy, they need to distance themselves in a very in every way possible from Nusra and Daesh. Yeah, and and you know the. People in the opposition are saying that, that in his statements on Friday, he talked about the opposition's legitimacy, but never talked about Assad's legitimacy or Assad losing it, having lost legitimacy. We, we have made not, and, we've made nothing but clear about uh, uh, Assad's illegitimacy. Well, they're, to, to they're, question, they're, they're pointing, they're, they're thinking that this looks like a shift in, in a policy um, and that now the U.S. is, is working with um, – you know, allowing uh, Assad, expecting him to participate in this transition deal, um, you know, and and that it looks like a, like a policy shift. So is it? No. But the problem is, is that if you have this situation where you and the Russians are going to okay, potentially okay, Syrian Air Force strikes, then you're cooperating with a guy who five years ago, a little over five years ago, the President of the United States said, no longer had legitimacy to lead. How is that not a, a, a shift? Uh, we're cooperating with uh, Russia, which has influence over the Assad regime. Yeah, it's not. It's not that the United States is dictating uh, 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 the uh, Assad Air Force's air traffic schedule. Okay, we're, no, no, we're, you're we're not dictating it, but you're allowing them. You're saying it's okay for them to 
launch it's, military operations. But Matt, Matt, it's always been okay under the cessation of hostilities that was agreed back in February to target Nusra. Nobody ever said at, at any time that I can recall uh, that it that it wasn't okay for air combat forces, be they Russian be, uh, or, or be they uh, Assad's, to to target solely target. A group like Al Nusra. Yeah, but you put yourself in a position now where you're giving Assad the green light to 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 to. to he, he's already had operation. the green light to go after Al Nusra. So you guys have been cooperating with Assad for no. for, for years while no. saying that he has lost legitimacy. No, there's been yeah. no cooperation with Assad, and there's not going to be cooperation with Assad. There's going to be cooperation and coordination with the Russian military, which has influence over. Assad. Right, and they're not later, so there's no link at all. You've separated yourself at I one think degree. I've responded but, to it. Right. I've heard a, a response to the part of my question about the marbleization and whether that's Yeah, actually, actually I, I wanted to come back to you on that. The, I think the Secretary uh, he said it again today, and uh, there's uh, uh, we're un we understand that there are places where the opposition are in proximity uh, to Nusra. And our message to the opposition hasn't changed at all. Uh, obviously, we're going to continue to support them uh, in their efforts, but uh, we have been very clear about our concerns about uh, physically co-locating themselves in or near uh, Nusra locations, because Nusra is not a party to the cessation. Um, and obviously, we don't want to see harm befall the moderate opposition. And as the Secretary said himself just a few minutes ago, we urge them to think carefully about where they are going to be geographically, um, as just as, as much as we urge them to comply by all the particulars in, uh, of, of this arrangement. So, so to the opposition, that sounds like they need to cede territory to the regime and, and to, to the operations against Nusra. No, it, it's not about ceding territory to the regime. It's about Again, if everybody by, if everybody abides by this, hang on, just please let me answer one of your questions before you jump in, okay? If everybody abides by the cessation of hostilities, there's not going to be any uh, ceding or grabbing of additional territory. What we want to see over seven continuous days uh, is a reduction in violence that does not include territorial grabs uh, or the need for uh, for ceding uh, uh, territory. That's not what this is about. It's about getting a level of reduced violence that can lead to the stand-up establishment uh, of the joint implementation cell. So if if you have a group that's marbled with Nusra and you're saying that basically that they need to either push Nusra out or or back away from that that space where they're marbled um, because that area will become um, a target, then if they have to pull back, then they they're seating, they're, they're backing up, they're retreating, right? If you're asking, are we in support of them removing themselves geographically from where we know Nusra is? Absolutely. And we've been saying that for months now. There's nothing new here. But if everybody's abiding by the cessation of hostilities, that shouldn't be a problem. Yes, sir. Um, so this is kind of hypothetical, but let's say that the cessation gets upheld. Um, and that the JIC is established. I'm curious about the manner of military cooperation between the U.S. and Russia that's being proposed. Um, as I mean, as you certainly know, and as you've condemned, the Russians have uh, done some bad things, uh, even in Nusra-controlled territory. I mean, yeah. hospital bombings, right? Um, so, what you know, what procedures are in place to uh, make sure they don't do that? Does the U.S. have a say in their targeting decisions? Well, the whole so a couple of things. Uh, again, as the Secretary said, our teams are now beginning to have discussions about the modalities of how the joint implementation cell will operate. And I'm not going to get ahead of those discussions. Uh, and it really is more for the Defense Department to speak to <coughs> than us here at the State Department. Um, so they're working our way through exactly how information, the, the, the physical nature with which how information is going to be shared and, um, and how it's going to be coordinated. And I just couldn't, couldn't begin to speculate about what that uh, looks like. Um, the idea, though, is for two things. One, uh, a level of information sharing and targeting information coordination so that we can be sure that military activities are designed to go to, uh, against the two groups that the cessation of hostilities has always held outside the cessation, and that's Daesh and Nusra, period. 
Number two, to also help supplement current ongoing efforts out of Geneva uh, on compliance and enforcement of this arrangement going forward. And as I said, um, and as the Secretary made clear, and it's written in the arrangement, that if at any time either side, the United States or Russia, believes that uh, it's no longer a sustainable arrangement, it's no longer a sustainable arrangement, and, 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 it, will, uh, and it will cease to exist. Um, and one quick follow-up. Uh, you said that the, um, the map that outlines uh, which zones are marbleized, which zones are <coughs> Nusra, and so on, um, was ironed out uh, the details in, in negotiations. What are the plans for when that gets updated? How does that get updated? When well, the idea, of, again, the, the idea is uh, knowing it's a fluid battlefield, that if there's a joint <coughs> implementation cell, there will be an, a sharing of information in real time so that it's updated in real time. Okay? More on this? Are we done with this? The Go ahead. The President of the Philippines has called on the U.S. to withdraw its special forces from southern Philippines, <coughs> saying, saying he fears they will be targeted by Islamist militants. What's the U.S. response? I've seen the, uh, the comments. I've seen them in press reporting. Um, and uh, uh, what I can tell you is that uh, we're not aware of any official uh, communication by the Philippine government uh, to that effect uh, and to seek that result. Um, so we're going to stay in touch with uh, our counterparts in the Philippine government. Uh, more critically, uh, we're going to remain committed to our alliance, com uh, our alliance commitments uh, in, in the Philippines uh, and, and to that country. We've got a long, uh, productive uh, history uh, with, with the Philippines. I understand that uh, that it's it's not a history without its without its past troubles. Uh, but we're committed to our our, our, our alliance with the, the Philippines, and we look forward to working our way through that. Do I understand it correctly? You're not going to respond to this specifically until they make an official request? Well, I, I don't think it's wise to, to try to make defense relationship decisions based on press reporting uh, well, of comments. Quote. It's not just no, press I, reporting. I know that. Said. But I'm, what I said is I'm not, we're not aware of any official request by the Philippine government for this, and so it, it would be premature for me to react one way or another to it. Just, just, just a few more. Do you share Duterte's concern about the safety of U.S. troops in the Philippines? We, sh we, we maintain concerns about the safety of our troops all around the world. It's one of the uh, prime considerations of American military leadership. Would it be correct to say that as, as you share Duterte's concerns about the safety uh, of troops, you think it is not good, good enough of a reason to withdraw troops from the Philippines? Well, again, I, I, I don't want to get ahead of uh, decisions that, as far as we know, haven't actually been made uh, or certainly communicated to the United States government. Um, secondly, this is really more of a matter for the Defense Department uh, if and when such a decision uh, would be transmitted by the Philippine government. But as far as we know, there hasn't been. So I, it really would be premature to get ahead of that. Just one last one. In the context of uh, offensive remarks made by Duterte, how was the communication between the two countries? Have they affected communication? I'm not aware that there's, uh, there's a specific impact on communication. I mean, we have an ambassador there, and he stays in touch daily with his uh, Philippine counterparts and with government officials. As far as I know, that, that communication continues unabated. Um, I think we've already talked about the, uh, from the podium uh, uh, some of the unhelpful comments that were made uh, by the President. We've been honest about that and forthright, as friends and allies should do. Uh, but again, this is a – we still believe in the importance of this bilateral relationship. We still believe in the commitments we have from a security perspective under that alliance, and we're going to continue to meet those. Have they affected relations at all? I'm not aware that there's been a tangible, practical effect uh, on, on relations. I think, as I said, we haven't been happy about everything we've heard, and we haven't been afraid to, to, to talk about that uh, and to be frank about it. Yeah. Could you update us on... I'll come back to you in a second, Nike. Could you update us on Brent McGurk's travels? Yesterday he tweeted a photo of the sun setting in Syria. Was he recently in Syria? And Last night he tweeted that he was flying overseas. Where is he going? That's a question we ask ourselves every day. <laughs> Where is Brett today? I, I actually don't have an update for his uh, on, on his schedule, so we'll 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 see if we can uh, get his staff to give us something we can provide to you. I, I just don't have the details on exactly where he is right now. Thank you.
Yeah, uh, China and Russia, do you have anything on the joint maneuver between uh, Moscow and Beijing uh, starting this week uh, near South China Sea? Well, we're aware of uh, uh, of uh, the exercises that uh, that they're conducting bilaterally. Um, it's not unusual for uh, nation states to exercise their militaries or to do so in, in, in a bilateral fashion. We do it all the time. Um, uh, the only thing that uh, uh, that we're mindful of is that um, as exercises like this take place, they take place in accordance with international law and don't do anything to raise tensions. But um, but uh, really, these exercises are for uh, the Russians and for the Chinese to speak to. In your estimation, is do, do you see this as a, a aim to counter U.S. efforts when uh, when the Washington is pursuing the so-called Asia Pacific policy? Well, again, I think you know the, the, the goal of the exercises. Uh, I would we'd, I'd have to refer you to the, the the Chinese and the Russians to speak to, to what they're trying to get out of this. Um, are we do we view it as a threat? No. Um, again, militaries exercise. They exercise sometimes together, as long as it's done in accordance with international law and isn't, uh, you know, threatening or, or being provocative uh, to uh, to another third party or nation state. Then, you know, there's nothing that precludes them from doing that. Uh, we will and have have been and will re remain committed to the Asia Pacific rebalance, which, oh by the way, Nike isn't just about the military. It's not just about. Uh, uh, Physical security in the Asia Pacific region. I mean, it, it's it's about economic development and it's about sustainable uh, uh, development goals. It's about uh, diplomatic and political engagement. I mean, there's a, there's more to the Asia Pacific rebalance than just moving most of the navy over there um, uh, and and being mindful of our security commitments, which are su significant. Five of our seven treaty alliances are in the Asia Pacific region. We take that seriously, including the one with the Philippines. If I may. Still on that? Uh, slightly different. Subject. Can I just ask? Sort of, I want to <clears throat> follow up on what you just said about how joint exercises are fine as long as they follow international law and are not provocative to a third party. Is that right? I think that's what I said. So when the North Koreans complain about U.S. South Korean exercises being provocative, they're that complaint doesn't count. No, it doesn't because they're wrong. The exercises <laughs> so are not you decide what you decide no. whether or not someone else's complaint about provocation Those exercises is valid you knew darn well, Matt. Those exercises. Well, just, are, well they, 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 we would and, and there mean, wouldn't have any, to be. There wouldn't come on now. There wouldn't mm -hmm. have to be a regular exercising of military capabilities with our uh, allies in the Republic of Korea if the North wasn't uh, conducting nuclear tests and launching ballistic missiles uh, and continuing to destabilize not only the peninsula but the region. Uh, but they are defensive. They are, the, 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 they are by nature defensive exercises yeah, because, well, unfortunately, that's what we need to focus on there. Well, uh, fair enough. I understand that. But I mean, it, so it doesn't. It, it's not any third party. It's basically any third party but North Korea can claim provocation. I don't think that. Uh, it, it, <laughs> I, I don't. Th I, I almost can't believe you are are, are potentially defending. Uh, in North I am Korea. Not defending anything. I'm just saying the North Koreans consistently say that this is provocative. And they, and, and over and over again. And you just said, and they're consistent, of Russia and, and China, they're consistently wrong when they say that. Okay. Right. Yeah. If I may, sure. Right. Uh, do you have anything on the um, uh, reported arms sale to Taiwan? Is, do you have anything to confirm the veracity of the uh, so-called um, HEARM, which is a high-speed anti-radiation? Yep. I know what it is. As you know, Nike, we don't talk uh, about proposed uh, arms sales one way or the other, so I'm not in a position to confirm that one way or the other. Yeah. Yep. Um, Secretary Liu said this morning at a Council on Foreign Relations event that we are going to do everything we can to try and keep the pressure on North Korea. Specifically, he was talking about uh, increasing the effectiveness of sanctions. So my question is, uh, what unilateral sanctions are the U.S. considering against North Korea? I don't have any specific unilateral sanctions uh, to speak to. Um, uh, as you know, we've uh, raised this inside the U.N., and um, uh, uh, we support um, the, the UN exploring uh, additional sanctions, um, but I won't get ahead of any uh, U.S. unilateral decisions that, that I'm not aware have been made yet. Um, but we are obviously uh, deeply troubled by uh, this most recent test, and uh, we are going to continue to look and evaluate uh, what options are available to us to increase the pressure on the North.
Are you looking at options just through the UN, or are you also looking at UN? I, I, I simply am not going to speculate one way or the other. I'm not going to get ahead of decisions that, that we haven't made as a government, uh, except to say that we have confirmed that we are going to work inside the UN uh, to consider the pursuit of additional UN sanctions. And we'll see where it goes. Okay? Yeah. So the South Korean's defense ministry said that the North could be ready for another test at any time. Um, what is going to be the U.S.'s response if that gap becomes – shorter and shorter between tests. Well, look, I'm, I think you can understand. I'm not, first of all, going to get into discussing intelligence matters here. I've seen those reports, and uh, uh, we're monitoring the situation as best we can, as closely as we can. We continue to urge the North to stop these provocative actions and to do what's right for their, for their people, which is to, to feed them, to educate them, uh, rather than to um, uh, – spend the resources that they're spending on these kinds of capabilities. Uh, but I wouldn't begin to speculate uh, about what might or might not happen um, in lieu of uh, – or, sorry, in, uh, in the wake of any future provocative actions that they might take. It's just not prudent for me to get ahead like that. Yeah. What is the U.S. stand on Balochistan? Because uh, <laughs> Indian Prime Minister has raised this uh, subject. Um, it is a part of Pakistan, but uh, about human rights there and about uh, um, the fight for freedom from there. And this has, has been in the media and everywhere. So what is the U.S. stand on that? The government, U.S. government respects the unity and territorial integrity of Pakistan, and we do not support ind independence for Balochistan. And uh, there are uh, – people and uh, persons, groups here who are working towards it. Do you support, do you tolerate them from uh, the U.S. soil? Uh, support for? Baluch uh, oh, As I said, our, the government policy is that we support the territorial integrity of Pakistan and we do not support independence for Baluchistan. Do you have any reaction to the Indian Prime Minister's uh, statements on that? particular I just subject. I think I just gave you our, okay. our reaction to uh, events uh, there. Okay, thanks uh, everybody. Uh, two very they're, oh, they're very out. brief, but one but well, one of them does have to do with Syria and it goes back. This is this is Jick. It's a Jick question. Uh, you say you, you say that you you can if you and the Russians agree then the Syrian air force can strike missile targets, right? What about Hezbollah and our Iranian forces? Well, uh so a couple of thoughts there. Um, the Secretary has been in communication with Foreign Minister Zarif, and the Iranians have come out and, and said that obviously right. they're uh, in favor of arrangements that would lead to political solutions, uh, I think is rough gist of how they uh, uh, put it. Um, um, which – and they have, as you well know, considerable influence over Hezbollah in that group. Um, uh, they are, uh, but uh, purely frankly speaking, they're not. Um, they are not exclu They are, they are not uh, outside the cessation of hostilities, as is Daesh or Al Nusra, because the cessation of hostilities holds only those groups that are right. designated as FTO mm -hmm. outside of it. So our expectation is. Uh, well, wait a second, by the UN, because Hezbollah the UN. is designated yeah, by the by UN. the UN, but the agreement under the ISSG is yeah, UN yeah. designated right. FTOs. Right. Okay. No, I understand that, it, but what uh, I'm asking. But, uh, okay. I know what you're asking. Okay. Hang on. But our expectation is uh, that uh, Iran will use its influence over Hezbollah in, an, in a way that is um, support, uh, support – that, is, that uh, is compliant with the cessation of hostilities and – more specifically with, with the arrangement that, that we've reached. Yeah, but what if Hezbollah wants to go after what it says is Nusra? Is the JIC going to be able to say, I don't okay, believe Hezbollah, that that's, you can go ahead and do I, 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 Again, I don't want to get in – the JIC is – the I, modalities I, are still being established. I don't want to get ahead of that. I'm not yeah, aware that be, that is going to be something that they're going to coordinate. Yeah, but the, okay, but the, 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 it goes to the point of whether the JIC is going to – first of all, you're saying that the, the JIC could green light Air Force operations by Syria, a country that is a designated state sponsor of terrorism, against another group that you say is a terrorist. Through Russian I, influence yeah, on exactly. the Assad regime. So this this goes to whether or not the JIT could also green light an, a, a military operation by Hezbollah, which is a F, U.S. FTO, against. Muslims. We're expecting Iran to use her influence on Hezbollah to comply. <clears throat> Last, last thing, and this is a uh, Middle East, uh, Israel question, Israel Palestinian question. So, on uh, your colleague last week, Elizabeth, um, 
did, was, did, was not too pleased with the um, video that uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu released about uh, ethnic cleansing and saying that the Palestinians uh, wanted, a, uh, wanted to ethnically cleanse um, what would be their future state. Um, since that has happened, uh, President Abbas has come out and accused Israel of ethnic cleansing. And I'm just wondering if you have any reaction to that, if you think this is kind of, uh, you know, what, is this just name calling back and forth, or do you have a, a serious concerns about the, the, the rhetoric and what it means? I, I think we would likewise say we don't find that sort of rhetoric appropriate or helpful. And uh, what we would say, uh, which, which what we have said, we want, you know, both sides to refrain from provocative rhetoric and actions that are just taking us farther away from a two-state solution. So, yes, we've seen those comments and find them inappropriate and unhelpful as well. So you do not believe that Israel is ethnically cleansing? Absolutely not. Okay, thanks, everybody.